So what we're doing today is we're going to we're working foundational needs of the brain from the past, from where the issues that that Audrey was dealing with in the past from the age of 10, we're going back to the, those developmental years and we're working with the circuitry that develops at that time. And the thing that we're doing currently right now is when, when we look at what's being developed at that time and let's say it's underdeveloped, we also know what will overdevelop to compensate for that underdevelopment on the other side of the brain. And so right now we're turning down those areas that tend to overdevelop so that by toning it down, when we tone this side up, it will be able to, to overcome those areas. When, when one side of the brain fires, the other side gets inhibited. But if it's so weak, it can't, it can't inhibit the other side. We got Arnold Schwarzenegger on this side and Pee Wee Herman on this side. That last area was Brahman's area six. It's a stabilizer system. It, it causes you to stabilize your body when, you, when you're moving. And it also has to do with refined movement, fine type movements that take a lot of skill to learn. This is the opposite of Broca's area. And on the right side, on the left side, Broca's area is our motor speech area. But on this side, on the right side, this one has to do with the emotionality of speech, but also the reason for speech. It's, you know, the, a lot of these kids, the autistic kids that, that can't speak, they, they have a right brain problem. You say, well, their speech is a left brain function. I say, absolutely. But the right, the right brain gives you the circuitry to be able to tell to see the reason and rationality for speech. And that's why when, when that circuitry finally does develop, they start speaking right away. It's not like they had to learn a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. They already understand, they, they can gesture, they can, they can do you know, all the basic things relating to speech without actually the vocalization. And so once this circuitry develops, then they see, oh, okay, it'll work better for me when I speak because I can get what I want, I can get it right now, and I can get exactly what I want. And once they see that, or they're able to see it with the circuitry, they go ahead and start to speak. This is 13. It's a part of the insular cortex. It's, it's fairly deep inside the brain, and it has to do with the emotionality the limbic, what we call the limbic brain, which is the emotional brain. It also has a lot to do with family, uh, the interrelationships you have with, with your family, the connectedness uh, that you've created from a neurological point of view. These areas right in here tie the parietal lobe to the temporal lobe and occipital lobe. These all work to blend all of that information together. Okay, and then we're gonna come up here, 11 and areas 11 and 12 very important area very mature circuitry it's usually about the last stuff to develop within the brain it's what i call the absolute no area the there this is where you keep the circuitry that where you've decided there there are certain things you will not do and the certain things that you will always do those things are in these two areas areas province area 11 and 12. And now 
we're going to begin working to build the other side. So we, we drive this down in preparation for building the other side. So we're gonna start with the cerebellum on the right, and you'll say, well, that's on the right. And I say, well, yes, it is, but it connects to the opposite cortex, and it drives it. So the power of the brain on this side is dependent upon the cerebellum on the opposite side. So we're gonna start right with the driving the cerebellum on the right side. we're going to work with at the very back Robin's area 17 and 18 which has to do with vision and the basic basic parts of vision come in in Robin's area 17 and then that and that's where what we call the phobia of each eye focalizes on and so that's 17 and then 18 gets all the other vision around it and that and it's one of those areas that doesn't develop as well when it when it's having developmental issues. And we have five and seven up here, and the five and seven are very very interesting. It's a, a culmination of all the maps of your world and you. So you have all these different areas of taking information for, about the outside world, uh, the sights, sounds, smells, tastes from the, from the outside world, and they create a map of your world. But then it also is a culmination of all the, all the maps created about your body, your own physical body. And so it dumps your body in the map. So it's a map of you in your world. And so that's an area that's vital for our ability to move in the future. We have to know where we are in space in order to be able to actually move through space. In fact, that's, that's really one of, the, one of the scientific truisms is if you don't know where you are, you can't move, you won't move. And so we're going to build that system. Now, what we're going to do here, this is Robin's area of four and six. So, Audrey, I'm going to have you finger tap. Uh, four and six. Four is about movement, basic movement. Six is about stabilization, but it's also fine movement. And so we're working that, working those cells and boosting them at the same time with the laser. And we're using a frequency that affects those two areas, but also it boosts it because we used a frequency on the other side that brought it down. Three months ago, I could not do this. This is areas 20, 21, 22, which have to do with hearing. It has to do with your ability to take in, take in information and then begin to sort it out and do something with it. It's in the temporal lobe. This area is in the temporal, temporal lobe.
this is Brokaw's area. We talked about the opposing group. We don't we don't have a name for it. It's 45 and 44 and 45 on this side. Well, this this is we call it Brokaw's on this side, and is the area of motor speech. So we're going to be doing a limerick here. Go ahead and pick one. Mommy made me mash my M&M's. 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 I've been having troubles with my hum. I'm trying to go up the scale. Better than what? Better than no hum. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Better than you couldn't do it. Very good. Once we get done here, we're going to be doing some things to prepare Audrey for, she's going to be singing this evening. So we're going to do some things to optimize her system from a neurological point of view to cause the vocal system, the vocal instrument to function better. All right, so let's pick something to sing just a little bit a few bars the wonders of the world are said to stop at seven but truth to tell my figures don't agree i number them at eight with one so close to heaven the others pale their magic stale just to take a look and see. Okay. All right. So let's stand on one foot. See where we're putting the peppermint. We're going to turn on the brain first. Okay. That out. Yeah, all into the right. And that's into in. To the right. Okay, so if you want to grab that, and we'll do on the left side, mm -hmm. left side. The sense of smell is the only sense that doesn't cross over. So we want to turn on the left brain, which we already were doing that with the laser. And there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. You should always do the nose first because when you do the throat first, it's sometimes overwhelming. <laughs> it's, yeah, it can be overwhelming. Okay, so we did the left, so we're going to do the right. Stick out your tongue. We're going to paint the tongue all the way back and then the throat. And we're going to get a gag <laughs> reflex. Getting a gag. Good. <laughs> oh, yes. Four or five. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, let's hear it. <gasps> okay. The wonders of the world are said to stop at seven. But truth to tell, my figures don't agree. I number them at eight, with one so close to heaven. How does that feel? It feels good, other than what I need to swallow you? really bad. <laughs> but it, uh, it's a lot less stress on my throat. It's really Very amazing. Good. Very good. Okay, so okay. let's do, this is the lower register. Which side is more soothing, that side or that side? The right. This is cranial nerves 9 and 10, and they control the swallow mechanism, and the swallow mechanism is where you get the lower register of your voice. Okay, so feel that. Okay, tell me when it's no longer soothing. 
I was expecting to say, my name is Helga, and I'm a shopper. My name is Helga. <laughs> that is so clever. Where'd you get that? <laughs> <laughs> I knew nothing before you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Okay. okay, swallow. See, what this does is both sides work together, and it means that she likely has a problem with swallowing, doesn't even know it. I hear that a lot in here. Normally, people will say, well, I'm, I'm making too much saliva and I'll do a little work on this and all of a sudden they don't. Well, it's because they, they're having trouble swallowing. Well, like I said, the, that lower area is not only about swallowing, it's about the, the lower register of speech. And so by doing that, that allows that system to, to function equally on both sides. Uh, it's not that it doesn't work, it just has a dissonance or disharmony of activity one side to the other. So let's try it now. The wonders of the world are said to stop at seven, but truth to tell, my figures don't agree. I number them at eight with one so close to heaven. How's that? Yeah, it's like easier. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're looking for is that greater ease of function. Uh, I mean, it was beautiful before, anyway but Thank you. it's that mm -hmm. ease that we're, that we're trying to accomplish where it's all working together synergistic okay so now what you're going to do you're going to push your tongue either way you know on each side which one is weaker hmm. left Tired okay, faster. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming it will be left. You're going to stick out your tongue. I'm going to shock your tongue. Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay. okay. Now, we're going to start on the right. All I want is just to barely mm -hmm. feel it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's as high as we're going to go. Okay, mm -hmm. you feel that? Mm -hmm. And then, which side do you like the best? Which side is more suited? Definitely on the left. Mm -mm. Oh, on the right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to do the one that tells me to do it. I just do what women tell me to do. <laughs> you tell me when it I'm feels. Glad. I'm glad. There you go. Okay, now sing. We oh, yeah, yeah. The wonders of the world are said to stop at seven, but truth to tell, my figures don't agree. You lady, or lady, or lady, yeah, it's easier. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The tongue. When you when you look at how, uh, what's innervating what, and when we say innervating. The number of nerves that are actually in different things. The, the thumb is highly innervated, but the tongue is the most. Okay. And so th that's why you can have a, an incredibly refined activity from that tongue, and you can hear the difference easily. You know, when somebody's talking, you can hear the slurring, you can hear the, that it's not as crisp. It's it's uh, slow and that, but you can tell it's not because they're having trouble with the say, they're having trouble producing it. And the, the uh, cranial nerve 12, which is the movement of the tongue, has just a huge nucleus in the brainstem. And so by getting that boosted, especially on the weak side, it makes total difference. All right, so. helps with my pronunciation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can I zap myself? It's possible. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible, yeah. Get the right machine to do it. There you go. Any questions? No. Mm -mm. Very good. Okay, thank you. You bet. <laughs>